the medieval organ. By the end of the 11th and 12th century, the organ had become a common instrument of monastic culture, but little is known about how it evolved within the liturgy. Documentary evidence by German monk Theophilus suggests the instrument became more of a permanent feature in the church, stating how they were mounted within recesses or on interior walls. Records supported by archaeological evidence at Fee Camp in Normandy, Ely, Winchester, Bury St Edmunds and Rochester in England shows all had substantial stone platforms constructed above the main arcade of the north transept to house organs. A manuscript from Usser near Paris suggests the use of the organ within liturgy started around the 11th century, recording that the sequence Victime Pascal Lourdes was performed by the instrument as the clerics danced. Aylred, abbot of Rivo in England, complained in records in 1141 of the chant being replaced by the thundering noise of the organ. The Arithetica and the Musica by Boethius in 1130 gives great insight into the system used for pitch notation, comprising of letters A to P. On a comb-like diagram, the letters are set along the teeth, with an additional feature corresponding to an appropriate letter, above the drawings of graduated pipes. The teeth represent keys which are pressed, releasing air into the relevant pipes, which create a higher pitch the shorter they are. By the 13th century, the organ had become widely accepted within the church, and the papal court at Avignon and Benedictine abbeys were the centres for influencing polyphony. In 1287, ecclesiastic reforms in Milan decreed that the only instrument to be played inside a church was the organ. By the 14th century, most churches in Western Europe possessed either a positive or church organ and saw the development of stops, pedals and the conflatorium making them easier to play and producing better sounds. Records such as the Robertsbridge Fragment and the Sagan Manuscript give details of how the organ was played during Mass. Henry de Saxe of Notre Dame gives an account of the organ being used for the prose, sequences and hymns, during services, and how he was expected to play for Vespers, feast days, and during Kyrie, Gloria, Sanctus and Agnus Dei. Some organ players, such as the famous positive organist Passero, composed music not only for St Mark's in Venice, but also for secular entertainment. By the end of the 14th century, the organ had become an important iconic aspect of church culture. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for part 4 which will discuss how the organ progressed during the late medieval period.